we've just had a big breakfast and we're not feeling like doing another big hike but we want to get to the top of this mountain up here so we're going to take the very very expensive <laughs> cape smoky gondola because at 54 dollars per person it ain't cheap i'll tell you that i think i like gondolas <laughs> well maybe i don't mind paying uh, 54 dollars per person for a gondola ride because we've got it all to ourselves, we don't have to, we don't have to share. It's, uh, it's quite romantic, eh? Yeah, it really is. We can talk about our feelings. Oh God, what have I got myself into? I feel happy today. Just smile and nod, then look out the window. Nice view. Smooth. I guess this is a ski hill then, because it looks like they've got ski runs. That's what you want, is you want a, a black diamond all the way into the Atlantic Ocean, that would be. Well, every second counts, eh? Enjoy your, your, your dollar, see? So the, the main reason why I wanted to do this gondola ride was to scope out the top of this hill and see what the view's like, see if it's photogenic for a potential workshop next year because I'm not sure if that many people that would come on a workshop would be interested in doing the hike, whereas this will be very easy access, I think. Well, it was definitely very easy access, but would the view from the top be any good? So some of the uh, warning signs are quite hilarious. Uh, this one, I think, basically says, don't throw your friend out of the gondola. This one says, don't push the door open, because you might fall. This one says, don't do a shart on your brother. This one says, don't throw water bottles out of the window. Oh, so I was thinking of doing that. This one says don't do a moody catalogue pose. You know the kind of thing that you would see in a magazine. Uh, don't know why that's prohibited. Uh, same with this, this one. Uh, don't do a, an action man catalogue pose in the gondola. Or stick your arm and your leg out in a kind of slightly camp manner. So, well, I'm glad I wasn't going to do any of those things. Well, I think you would have probably done the third one down. What was that? Shart in my face. That's Wednesday afternoons only. Right. Don't let people know about what goes on. Right, time for a little bit of a meander. See if we can find some killer viewpoints for some photographer. view was rather spectacularly equal, except for just one problem. Well, I was just talking to the uh, charming gentleman in the maintenance hut up there about schedules and what it's like in the autumn. And he was saying that the latest that they're open till is seven. So you could get a gondola up here for sunset, but you'd have to hike back down, which isn't that bad. It's, it's the going up that's painful. Um, but really from where we got off the gondola you can't really get a shot of this beautiful valley without the gondola in the shot but we've just spied these uh, picnic tables down there so I think we're gonna we're gonna get off the uh, official trail he said we could go down there so we're gonna go down there and see if we can get a shot of the coastline here that doesn't have the gondola in it because it's cool but it's not really what I want in my shot Well, it's nice, but it's not, it's not a killer shot. Even with fall colors, it's, it, I don't think this is gonna work. It was worth a try, a very, very expensive try, but I don't think it's gonna do it, love, so. That's too bad, that would have been perfect. It would have been perfect, wouldn't it? So yeah, I don't think it's gonna work out, but we're only about half an hour from a really epic hike, which would work well for tomorrow mornings sunrise so i say we drive there get comfy get settled and then we have an early night and go and do mount franey in the morning do you think you can wake up early enough of course i can yeah should we make a bet on it yeah what do you want to bet whoever wins has to make coffee it's not much of a wager is it no whoever loses has to do all of the miserable dirty work when we do the next sunny dump because it always seems like i end up doing that job for some reason. Well, it's a good thing I feel like I'm gonna win this bet. So yeah, we'll go with that. So if I don't get up at 4 a.m., it's business as usual. If I do, you're doing the sunny dump. If only she'd known what would happen at the very next sunny dump. 
I don't want to do a standing job. It's gross. It's about time, though. I mean, I've done all of them. Every single one of them. Yeah, but you like it. I don't like it. It's yeah, awful. <laughs> uh, no, it's an horrible job. I do it because you don't. Well, I'm going to keep it that way. I don't. <laughs> Can you give me a towel? <laughs> Ridiculous. Oh, did you know about my new channel, Hardcastle Towers? No? Oh, there's a link in the description. So we got back on the road to get to the next locale. Oh, it got cold, didn't it? Such a bit chiller. Yeah. Where should we stay tonight? Well, this spot looks as good as any. It's pretty quiet and private. Yeah, let's stay here. All right, let's pull in here. And so after a long day of driving up the coast of Nova Scotia, we decided to have an early night and get cozy in the camper. Because after all, I had a wager to win that required me to get up at stupid o'clock. Well, it's 4.15 a.m. I've had two hours of sleep and I do have a face like Neil Young reviewing his latest Spotify revenue statements. And I'm not very happy with myself, I've got to be honest. Because I set the alarm for four. Why did I set it for four? That was already too late. I woke up three minutes before the alarm. I already know that outside there's going to be a spectacular sunrise in about 15 minutes. Well, we've got no chance of making it up to the top of the hill in 15 minutes. So that's it, we've blown it. We're not gonna get a sunrise shot. I'm a bit annoyed with myself. I don't know why I did this. And maybe next time we could get here early and actually have a good sleep about it. I think next time it's gonna be autumn. I had about four hours of sleep. Yeah? Yeah. What, what's your face like? I have a face like a microwaved apple. You do, actually. I do have a face like an uncooked spam fritter with sweet corn. That sounds bumpy. Exactly. It's foul. Anyway, we'll finish this uh, nuclear jet fuel coffee, which is uh, so very badly needed. Now, I want to address a regular comment that I've seen on the videos ever since we arrived in Nova Scotia, and that is a lot of people saying, I think you can ditch the bear spray, Gavin. Well, actually, no. On our very second shoot here in Nova Scotia, when we went to the Three Sisters, uh, we saw a very large black bear quite close to the camper. And we're in the Highland now, and this is where, if you're gonna see a bear, this is where you're gonna see it. This is about as mountainous as it gets in Nova Scotia. So yes, I will be bringing my bear spray along with me. And I never told you the story because I didn't shoot a vlog about it, but uh, last year in, in the summer, I had a, a quite unpleasant bear experience, a black bear experience where it was following me along the trail. And that's the first time I've ever been uh, nervous around a black bear. So ever since that, uh, this this sticks with me. So even if I look stupid taking this down to the beach at Hopewell Rocks or wherever, I don't care. Plus it's really good seasoning for fried eggs. It's also good to fight off those creeps that stalk us. Are you condoning violence against a fellow man, even if they're psychotic? Well, if someone's gonna come after me, I'm gonna spray him in the eye. You know, psychopaths have rights too, Amanda. And so we hit the trail with the clouds on fire, of course. And as predicted, the sky is just kicking off behind me. It's just glowing. And there's every now and then this little copse of trees will just light up crimson as the light just peeks through a gap in the canopy and hits some of these trees. And it's, it's taunting me, it's teasing me. My own stupid fault. Anyway, at least we've got an uphill climb for an hour and 15 minutes. <laughs> it just goes up and up. So the name of this hike is uh, the Mount Franey hike, or Franny. I'm gonna go with Franey. And uh, it's about, probably about an hour and 15 to the top. So given my uh, disgraceful condition, I would say at least an hour and a half. But uh, I'll tell you what, I, I do need this exercise because I sound like a malfunctioning set of bagpipes going up this bugger, I tell you. I'm always 
always looking out for is a gnarly tree in a colourful forest. And this guy might just look spectacular in mid-October when the canopy is glowing a lovely yellow and gold. I'll be coming back to visit this spot, I can tell you right now. So slowly but surely, we made it to the top of the mountain and the view did not disappoint. <music> So we made it to the top of uh, Mount Franey. I, I think this is Mount Franey, otherwise I don't know why they would call it the Mount Franey Trail. And this is the view, have a look at this business over here. So this is the valley towards, I believe, Inganish. I might be wrong with that, but I think that's what it is. And of course we're looking east, that's the sun rising up there. But what I was hoping for was an inversion in the valley and then the sun pops up, lights that, and lights all of these hills. So looking at the hills from this viewpoint now, they're pretty small, you know, they're not quite the mountains that I'm used to from BC, but when you get that lovely kind of stripy light that I got when we were in Meat Cove the other week, where you've got like bits that are in shadow and bits where the sun is just hitting it, which it's, it's just doing now, it's just poked over that, that bit of cloud and now it's just creeping into the valley that's when it comes to life so without that light it's just kind of some boring little humps but when the light hits it it just bursts with color texture and contrast so that's what i'm hoping for we may have to stick around for a while for that to happen because the sun's just about to come over those clouds and i need it to kind of hit the ones that are higher up before it has that effect so we'll just hang around for a little bit and, and i think it's times like this but I just want to sit down and read a really interesting book. Now, every landscape photographer needs those moments of inspiration while they're waiting for the light. I think I'm about half an hour from perfect light. So I'm just going to kill 30 minutes by reading a copy of Chasing Awe of Gavin Hardcastle. There's a link in the description below and it, it, it's just, not only is it full of spectacular images such as this one here, of the old man of store, but some very inspirational stories. And you know, if you've got a sense of humor, which I know that some of you have, uh, you might find some of these anecdotes rather appalling. Uh, did, have, you, have you read the book, love? Most of it. What do you mean most of it? Well, I ran out of time one day and then I got distracted with a unicorn book and I just haven't got around to it. Well, what are you reading right now? Birds. Oh, I'm trying to impressed Simon. Well, I got into this before we met him actually, so yeah, I, there is no impressing because um, I can't pronounce half of these, so I make up my own words in my head. Well, I make up my own words too in this book, Chasing All with Gavin Hardcastle. There's, there's a lot of nonsense. I mean, there's a lot of creative writing in there, so. Yeah, the parts I read were really good. The, there's a link in the description. You know what, love, it's probably a good thing that you haven't read the whole thing, because there's a few stories in here about you, you know. Yeah, I'm usually grumpy on the trail, so I couldn't imagine they're good. <laughs> you are a bit grumpy, but it's because you, you're dragged out of bed, aren't you? I wasn't too grumpy today. No, you weren't too bad. There was some animal noises and some moaning, but... That was you. Oh, that's right. <laughs> right, so I've had a lot of comments and questions People asking me about the, the Sony A1 and what I like about it and why I got such such a ridiculously overpowered, basically videography slash sports wildlife birding photography type of camera. <clears throat> and there's a few reasons why I wanted to get this this camera and a couple of reasons are the, the obviously the high performance when it comes to action shots, which I don't do that often but maybe three or four times a year, I'll go out and shoot waves at very high speed and, and being able to capture every single moment with supposedly, or, or, with reportedly better autofocus, better tracking, faster frames per second, no blackouts, all that kind of stuff. Even though I won't use that very often, that could be a priceless uh, ability in this camera. So for that, that's one of the reasons why I wanted this, this particular camera. And then I also wanted the um, 8K video because 
when I do these kind of skits where I zoom in on people's faces, quite often, by the time I've done those zooms, they're all pixelated and look like Lego blocks. I'd like a bit more resolution on those video clips for when I do those comedy zooms, just so that the flow is a little bit better and you don't get these jagged pixelated images, which I think some of you might like. It kind of looks funny because it looks so bad, but I'd like it not to look really bad. And then of course the, the 4K 120 frames per second. So these are some of the reasons that, that I wanted this camera, but already I'm, I'm completely out of my depth. I tried to use this yesterday with the Puffin photography session and, and I just could not figure out the autofocus and the tracking. It was very, very complicated. And it's just me, it's just user error because I'm just not used to shooting like that. I'm used to shooting big grand landscapes on a tripod. The, you know, the, the most complex issue is focusing and bracketing and that's it with this type of action photography with with the birds it's a completely different ball game so uh, i'm not going to say anything bad about the camera with regard to that it's just me that doesn't know how to use it i really need to read the manual look at some tutorials and, and ask some questions and figure it out i mean the first week i had this i couldn't figure out how to switch autofocus continuous on i just couldn't find it in the menus i couldn't find it on any of my dials and it turns out there's a dedicated dial just for different focus modes there. I just had to turn it and put it into AFC mode. Seems really obvious, but because I'm so used to all the previous generations of Sony, I completely missed it. I didn't, didn't find it until I posted a question on a YouTube video and someone said, yeah, it's on the dial. So I felt a bit stupid with that. But anyway, long story short, I haven't really delved into what the camera can do. I haven't had the time because we're too busy doing a church restoration, by the way, Hard Castle Towers. Uh, there's probably a new video out right now. Go and watch that and uh, check out our church restoration project. Anyway, I just haven't had the time to dedicate to this camera, but it's it's amazing, it's, it's super powerful, but until I feel like I really know this thing inside out, then I don't really wanna try and pretend that I'm an expert with it. So eventually one day I'll probably do a full review of it, but right now I'm just finding my feet with it and uh, failing a lot of the time. So anyway, if you know any videos that have got like setup tips, uh, autofocus tips and tracking tips about the A1 that you think I would probably benefit from, please post a link to those videos in the comments section and I'll actually watch those videos and uh, that'll help me along my way towards becoming competent with this camera. Oh, is that a chickadee? Chickadee dee dee dee. Oh yeah. Oh, that sun's right. That sun's popping up. Let's get the camera set up, love, and go and set up a shot. Chickadee dee 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 dee. Oh, makes me a bit twitchy. Does that? So ever since we arrived here in Nova Scotia. I've got to admit, I've been a little bit obsessed with the, the island of Cape Breton, and in particular, the Highland. And this is on the Cabot Trail, which is world famous for its fall colors. So I would say mid-October, this whole valley will be aflame with bright yellow colors and oranges and reds. And if I can get those misty mornings with a, a cloud inversion and mist coming off the tops of these hills ah absolutely spectacular so i've kind of made it my mission to scout this entire highland area this summer for the best shooting locations possible in preparation for the autumn and next year what i'm hoping to do is put together a series of workshops here on the cabot trail in the cape breton highlands so if you're interested in possibly joining those workshops next year i'll put a link to the mailing list down in the description and just sign up to the mailing list and you should get notified when those become available so this is pretty much my my composition i'm really fascinated by these these rocks here in the foreground and then of course this gorgeous valley view that goes right out to the ocean so it's a case of waiting for that light to get just right 
Oddly, I kind of want the sun to get fairly high. It's not even 7 a.m. yet, it's just gone 6.50. So I reckon by eight-ish, maybe eight o'clock, maybe even later, the sun should be at the right kind of angle to just blast into this valley. I mean, you can almost see it just starting, but I'd like it to be a bit more contrasty. And for that, the sun needs to be just a little bit higher so that it's it's got a more harsh angle. That's actually not bad. I'll tell you what I'm going to do, I'm going to start waffling, <laughs> I'm going to get this shot and then I'll just wait, I'll just keep shooting the exact same composition for the next hour or so and then pick the best moment of contrast you like, but that is actually looking quite juicy, oh god. <laughs> The sun's high enough now, but unfortunately it's completely cleared all of those clouds. So what I have now in the valley, if you can see that, it is just completely unbridled, harsh sunlight. Whereas what I was hoping for was those spotty, stripy sections that the clouds create by just blocking the sun in certain areas. Far more pleasing than just a blanket of harsh light that hits every single surface so i didn't quite get the light i was hoping for it's funny in the opposite direction there's there's exactly that i'm getting exactly that but that's not where the composition is there's really no composition in that direction and it, it's a shame because i've got so much to work with here i've got all this beautiful foreground Th these rocks are absolutely fantastic and then i've got this gorgeous snaking river that just meanders through this valley I, I'm going to guess it comes through the mountains, down this valley, and then out into the ocean. Just gorgeous. I've got all of the ingredients except for that light. If I could just have the light that we had a couple of weeks ago in Meat Cove, oh man, this would be fantastic. I'm going to give it another 10, 15 minutes, but I think I'll probably call it quits fairly soon. But if all I get out of today is the shot that I, that I just shot there with sort of half decent light, then I'll, I'll be happy with that because I've got this in my back pocket ready for October when this whole valley is just glowing with hot, vibrant colour. I can't wait to come back. Anyway, if this shot turns out to be half decent, here's the shot. said it turned out to be a half decent shot and that's usually the way it goes when you get okay light but time spent in nature is never a waste of time and you can guarantee i'll be back on that trail very soon so that that i think is the best of the light it wasn't quite the sunrise that i was hoping for but you know it hardly ever is i would say 10 percent of the time it is if we'd have got up an hour and a half earlier, it probably would have been fantastic, but I just couldn't drag me ass out of bed. Anyway, it's logged in memory. We're definitely gonna come back here, probably again this summer, but probably a few times in the autumn. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the old thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, don't forget to tickle my bell, and we'll see you in the next one. <laughs> Do you think it's going to be easier to walk down than it was up? Well, it's going to be harder on the thighs, but easy on the lungs. That's always the way of going down. <gasps> okay. Right, let's go.